Hi folks and welcome to the latest in my Would I Recommend series and today I'm going to be talking about Pine, what appears to be a cute little adventure game in much the same guise as some of the Legends of Zelda games were. I first saw it back in October of last year and I had a few issues with the game then so I thought I'd give it time and see if it got patched or changed at all. Sadly the issues I had with the game then are still present now. So would I recommend it? No, not really. This one would definitely be a pass from me although some people do like this and some people praise it quite highly uh, but I'll tell you what I found wrong with the game in just a moment. But first, the story. Pine claims to be an open world action adventure simulation game, although I'm not quite sure exactly what it's trying to simulate. You play as Hugh, a young member of a village full of humans that live atop a great big rock, uh, but this village is going to go through some bad times and Hugh's going to have to go out into the world and find a new home for them. This is going to involve going into the unexplored lands out there that no human in living memory has ever traversed across. So Hugh sets off into the wild out there and finds that these lands are actually already populated by tribes of very strange creatures indeed, none of which are particularly willing to help. Well, not at first. That's where you come in, you see. You've got to persuade these tribes to help you by bartering, trading, and just doing things that will make them like you a lot more, like giving them loads of stuff that they need. And that is the general gist of the game doing stuff that makes these tribes like you more until they give you what you need whilst you're also busy exploring the big open world, solving a few puzzles and generally finding secrets and having a blast out there. There is combat in the game as well and we're going to talk about all these things because unfortunately I have issues with all of them but more on that in just a minute. But first, let's be positive and mention a few things I did actually like about Pine. And we'll just start with the graphics. Yes, it's a cutesy, cutesy, simple, cartoony art style. Some people aren't going to like this at all and they want something more serious and dark in their adventure games. But I didn't mind it and it kind of suited the light-hearted, simple theme of the game. Even the speech between the characters is also quite cute. And it, it is just gibberish. There's no real human voiceover in this that's anything meaningful. But the whole theme of it, it kind of fits, it kind of suits, and that's just fine. Also, the music, the background music, the score, that's actually quite pleasing and quite relaxing and quite mellow most of the time. I like that too, that was pretty good. And the only other thing that actually I did like was the fact that there's a few simple puzzles in here. They're nothing too strenuous, but I do like to see puzzles in games. I feel like they're missing from a lot of the games we play these days. And these are just simple things like switching levers or hitting buttons to access new areas. But some of them do make you think a little bit, which is a good thing. And alas, that was pretty much all I enjoyed out of Pine. So let's move on to the list of problems I think the game has. And unfortunately, it's a lot bigger. We'll start with combat, which is one of the major things. It just doesn't feel good. It just doesn't feel responsive. It's neither fast nor slow and strategic. A lot of the time I had a job just controlling the character properly and this was made a lot worse by the camera which seemed to be all over the bloody place. I mean he never seemed to be pointing in the direction I wanted it to and often it would whiz behind the tree leaving me blind temporarily whilst the enemy managed to get an attack in and I couldn't see to dodge. I mean, don't get me wrong, combat is supposed to be a fairly simple affair in this. You've got a couple of different types of attack you can make, a block if you get a shield and a dodge. But hitting them at the right time doesn't always work. The enemies don't always telegraph their moves and some things can't be blocked either. But it just didn't feel responsive and I didn't enjoy it. It neither felt challenging nor rewarding because even when I beat an enemy, it didn't feel like it was down to my skill and choices made, but perhaps just a little bit of luck. But at the same time, when I got beat, I felt like I could often blame it on the game, not responding or not doing what I was intending the character to do. But it's pretty damn hard to land or dodge attacks when the camera suddenly shifts its focus from the enemy to your character's head as you're trying to run around. So the combat is something that I noticed straight away. What became apparent later that became a problem was the fact that you've got this need to satisfy these different factions, these different tribes of villagers. And you need to satisfy them to get them to trade with you for the stuff that you need. And the problem here is that if you satisfy one tribe, it'll often upset another, or the actions that you need to do to please one will upset another. For example, if you make friends with the frog people, the chicken people are probably going to hate you. If you make friends with the chicken people, you'll end up at war with the crocodile people, and so on. And oh, it just becomes in this, this horrible 
endless, ceaseless circle of just having to satisfy someone knowing that you're going to upset somebody else that you later need to deal with and will have to go about satisfying them again. And I don't enjoy games that make you do that. And one of the simple ways of gaining friendship and standing with a village is to give them materials that they're short of. Perhaps some raw materials that you've harvested out of the countryside. Each village will prize different stuff. The problem here, which leads me into the next issue, is the limited inventory space that you've got. In a game where collecting everything for either crafting, hoarding or giving to various people is essential, the fact that you can't hoard everything is an absolute pain in the ass because you'll find yourself limited in what you can carry, you'll have to drop some stuff not knowing if you're going to need it later and it's sod's law that if you drop a type of rock to pick up some feathers to give to the nearest village, the next village you meet will want that rock that you have to go all the way back for to try and find a source of. It's made worse by the fact that your character, Hugh, also has to carry food to restore his energy, which is used by fighting, blocking, jumping, running, and basically doing everything apart from turning the game off, it seems. So yeah, I always found myself with either not enough inventory space or just not being able to carry the one thing which 10 minutes later I found I needed and having to backtrack to go and get. And finally, let's talk about this open world. Yeah, it's an open world. You can run around and pretty much do whatever you want and see things. There's a few monsters in there to fight and kill and there's some materials to pick up and there's a few caves to go into. Uh, but overall, it feels kind of empty. There's plenty of open space between the villages, but there isn't a whole lot to do in there. There's a few little secrets to find, or at least that's all I found. But... I didn't enjoy running around the big open space, attacking the same things, which I then couldn't loot because my inventory was always full of materials. So it was just, well, you think, well, what's the point? Why does it need to be this big if they're not going to fill it full of activities or just any point of interest or something to do? And again, it does lead me back to the inventory issue because the materials you need might be spread far apart and you'll end up putting markers on the map to try and remember where a source of this or a source of that is. You'll go running back for it. But if you're running from a long way from point A to B to go and do something and you find something secret or a monster to kill, but then you can't loot or pick up whatever you found afterwards, it's really annoying. It does lead me back. But yeah, the open world is, it is as it says, it's open. You can go and look around pretty much anywhere but it's it's not that exciting unfortunately and that sums up pine in a nutshell really for me it's just not a very exciting or interesting game it's not bad don't get me wrong they've got some nice ideas and some nice features in there but it just isn't enough to hold my interest at all and i didn't particularly enjoy it i wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you really love these style of games. My overall rating on this one is a 5 out of 10. And whilst it's not terribly expensive, there are plenty of other better games that you could pick up for the same money or less, especially if you wait for one of the big sales.